to the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings. Week 18 in the NFL. Big game for many reasons for both teams, including the Minnesota Vikings. We'll bring in our good friend Ben Lieber, former NFL linebacker, Vikings sideline reporter, and of course, uh, TV host at KFAN and KSTP. Ben, how you doing, my friend? Hey, Ben. Oh, I'm doing great. How you guys doing? <laughs> ah, doing good, Ben. You know, I'll tell you, we have been in your spot more times than we can ever talk about where you need a win and help to get in and let me just for for the scenario for the minnesota vikings if i have this correctly win then you need a packers loss seahawks loss or saints loss that could happen or win and have a packers loss seahawks loss and bucks loss so you do need some help and crazier things have happened ben what is the mindset of the minnesota vikings as they head in to week 18 at ford field well i i mean obviously it's to win right i mean you want to win and give yourself a chance you know um i think everybody's looking at all the players are looking at the same scenario i know that they probably think it's less than two percent that they get into the playoffs but you want to go out and you want to you want to end the season with the win, knowing that your very own Detroit Lions may not be giving 100% because you guys have to have a few things go your way as well to win, and then you guys have to have a couple other things to happen for you guys to get the number two seed. So the likelihood of that happening combined with the likelihood of us winning plus the three other losses, I, I don't know, man. It's gonna be um, it'll be interesting to see, but I think that we have. A little bit of the upper hand when it comes to the motivation versus what you guys maybe are looking at. No doubt. And, and Ben, as, as you look back to just a couple of weeks ago, um, that game came down to the final seconds in Minneapolis. And it seems like for Minnesota anyway, uh, what could have been if that game, uh, one more play was made in that game. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's the thing that's frustrating about this team this year. Who who would have thought that all of these turnovers that we battled early in the season would actually become our identity? Um, it's crazy that they it lasted all season long. And we could say that same excuse and make that same excuse for every game that we've lost. That, hey, it's come down to a one-score game and one less turnover in this one crucial situation. And we're, guess what, we're on the other side. We have, we've got, and we're not we're not sweating out a playoff scenario. We're actually in the playoffs, and we're feeling pretty good. So um, that's just the way it's gone this year. I can't explain it. You know, sometimes it's being aggressive with quarterback plays. Sometimes it's just ir irresponsible quarterback play. Other times it's just a, a receiver trying to make a play, or or just the fluke and where defensive players make good plays on the football. That because that's what they're coached to do. So. All those things just sort of cascaded on us this year, and uh, we just never found a way out. Well, you've had probably the worst luck in injuries, as you were saying. I mean, how many more people could be injured on that team? And last week, I thought Kevin O'Connell made a mistake not starting, not rolling with Nick Mullins, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I watched the Lions game the week prior to that, and he could have won that game, obviously. If that pass was just a little bit better to J.J., you win that game. Uh, I just thought he gives you a better chance. Yeah, he throws the interception, but he throws you – I, I like him. For some reason, I like this guy. I think he gives you a good chance to win. I hope not this week, though. Well, we like him, too. You know, we we like his his uh, his risk-taking ability, and we like the excitement in which he plays. It's just, you know, when you, when you battle, like I said, turnovers all season long and about the, the – one third of the season in coach O'Connell uh, very, very much declared his frustration publicly with, Hey, if you don't hold on to the football, if you don't take care of the football, then we're going to find somebody that will. And so he kind of put an ultimatum to the team. So he, he, he season was fed up with it already. And so I understand from his standpoint that we have a chance to win. Yes, Nick goes out there and throws for a lot of yards. He threw with more anticipation. The offense was much more explosive, but alas, you cannot turn the ball over. And so I think that frustration boiled into the this following week ago with Jaron Hall in that maybe we don't need 411 passing yards to win the game. Maybe we, meet, we need 220 passing yards, an adequate run game, and we don't turn the ball over and that's good enough to win. So I think that was the mentality 
uh, going in and, and having Jaron Hall start. But, um, you know, they saw enough of him for just one half that they went back to yeah. Nick. Talking to Ben Lieber, does sidelines for the Vikings. And, uh, Ben, you know, this has been kind of a crazy season. I'm not sure what word you would give it, but but crazy seems appropriate to me. You know, for Kirk Cousins, Josh Dobbs, uh, you've got all these different qu- – For you forget that Josh Dobbs came in and had one of the most <laughs> electric games of the NFL season. Three weeks. Uh, <laughs> right? Um, but, but, you know, the last time we talked – you mentioned Kirk Cousins as a possibility to come back next year uh, as the Vikings quarterback. And just that scene last week with him uh, leading the skull chant shirtless, um, it seems like he really loves it in Minneapolis. Does Minneapolis love Kirk Cousins enough to bring him back? I think so. I think so more so than any other time. Um, He's certainly increased his value by by watching from the sideline and having all these other quarterbacks go out there and falter and you take this very um promising team with him in the lineup and all of a sudden you you see this downhill slide into possibly out of the playoffs and so his his value certainly increased i think his popularity increased his popularity has been going up ever since koc took i think he felt a little bit a little bit handcuffed by mike zimmer Mike was, you know, much more stern. He he wanted to run a tighter ship. I think he had certain expectations for what the quarterback should be and what they should behave like. And so I think he felt a little restricted on not letting his personality out. And then KOC comes in and, man, you I know you. We know each other. Like let let it go. I think you play you're a better player when you're when you're more yourself and you can be a, a normal human being. And so um, he's really let that out. I think the defensive players uh, Zadarius from last year, I think, was really instrumental in getting that personality to come out. You know, posting you know, all that stuff, Instagram and social media about the plane trips home and the things that they're doing in the locker room. You know, I think it made Kirk just feel comfortable. It's like, hey, this this is who I am. I am a kind of a goofy, dorky guy. I I own it. He knows who he is. He loves his Coles cash, and I think he's shy. <laughs> who don't? For him. But now he feels the love. I think now he's just like letting it fly. And and I think everybody's eating it up because he's always been authentic. I think he's just held back his authenticity because he was told to. Ben, what was your take on uh, the Lions and Cowboys finish uh, last Saturday night? I'm sure you had to at least tuned in a little bit to watch that game. What, what was your take on that finish? What would you have done? You guys got screwed. Yeah. You guys, I mean, flat out got screwed. And um, I'm, I'm disappointed with the NFL. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that guys like us aren't going to get fined by the league for for chastising the officiating this year i think it's been atrocious it's been awful there's no accountability in a in a league where all we do is keep coaches and players and administrators and front office people we keep them accountable in the public eye and we put them in this fishbowl and and we go after them fans go after them everybody goes after them for mistakes being made on and off the field you know we have something coming up called black monday that happens in the NFL. I know it happens in other leagues, but it's just more prominent in the NFL. And um, these were guys, people get fired, lives change because they don't do their job. And yet when it comes to officiating, this protection, you know, there's like this invisibility cloak that's put over the accountability officials. And, um, you know, whether it's making these officials full time whether it's, you know, whatever it is to change the work environment to where we can keep these guys accountable and, and at least allow them to understand, like allow them the platform to admit to a mistake. I think that's the other part of it that, that, that drives me crazy is they know they're being protected. They know that, was it Brad Allen? Was that who the, yeah. who the guy was? Yep. He knows he made a mistake. So just say it. Right. I think we're a forgiving I think we're a forgiving society in a lot of respects. And if you own up to it and you're honest about it and you're like, you know what, it's my bad. I talked about it before the game. We got caught up in the game. Three guys approached kind of simultaneously. I knew that that was the case. I I jumped to conclusions. I declared 70 the eligible the eligible it was my bad. Don't you think Dan Campbell would ex- accept that? Yes, think I think we all would have that eventually but they don't they just hide behind it and say like nope that's it says in the rule book the player has to declare like how much more declarative do you have to get he was in your face 
He was six inches from your nose, and you say that he's got to be more declarative. It's just a bunch of BS. All right, Ben, solve this for us. Once that penalty happens, do you kick the extra point and go into overtime from the seven-yard line? Or do you say, no, we're going to go win this game? Don't let him sway you, Ben. <laughs> Uh, what would you do as a player? Win this game. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, that's the answer. You don't Damn want, right. You don't want Campbell to change who he is. Like that, he's, he's going for it, and he's going for the jugular. That's what he does. That's who he is. Um, I, I loved it. I like the idea that they, they kept going for two because that mentality, even though they didn't even though they didn't make it, and here we are talking about them getting screwed over for their pitch now, where they, you know, it's going to be hard for them to get the number two seed. It would be much easier, obviously, if they'd win that, won that game. All those things. But that mentality, that trust factor, I think that that's more important to this team as, um, as a team builder, as, as the chemistry and the makeup of this team. That's more important. Ben, who would you rather play if you were the Lions? The Rams or the Packers at Ford Field? And you can't say the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd take the Packers. Yep. Um, I know that I obviously everybody knows the storyline with the Rams coming back or coming to Detroit and um, and that whole situation with Stafford. But look, I I don't like me personally. I I don't like going against teams with an offense and a non-mobile quarterback like Goff, and you're going against one of the best interior interior pass rushing D lines in the league. Um, I don't think that that looks good. I, I would rather take my chances against a defense that's struggling a little bit, although they look they look you know phenomenal against the Vikings <laughs> last week. Yeah. But they're in a situation where they're going to fire their defensive coordinator. So I'd rather take my chances at home with a limited mobility quarterback against the defense that, that is hopes. So I take the pack. Hey Ben, last one for you. I'm curious your thoughts in. in... You know, we never hear anything about Justin Jefferson. Um, and, and this has been kind of a quiet season for him, obviously playing with four quarterbacks. Uh, he was injured as well. What's his frustration level? Uh, what's it been like this season? What kind of guy is he? Is he a guy that that uh, is just going to say, okay, this is a one-off season, we'll get it right? Or is he a guy that says, man, you got to get me a quarterback here and you got to get me one now? I, I just don't know anything about him. <laughs> uh, I would say right now um, <laughs> he's the best type of superstar. Yep. It's um, it's it's a it's an amazing thing to be self-aware and as confident as he is. You know, a lot of people are extremely cocky and extremely confident, but they lack that self-awareness. I think that he has it all. Um, he knows that he's good for the league. He knows that he's good for the Vikings. He knows that he's one hell of a player. And and uh, and I th we all think that he's the best receiver in the league. Um, and he's not shy about professing his love for Kirk Cousins. And he's been saying it for weeks. You know, he doesn't beat the drum about it. He gives an honest answer when he's asked about it. He is not overextending himself to, to make sure that he lets the front office know. He's not creating some sort of divide and, or an ultimatum. He's just answering questions when the media asks, what do you think about a quarterback situation next year? What do you think about Kirk Cousins coming back? And he'll give an honest answer. So um, I think he's great. I can't wait to see um, how the Vikings sign him and what that contract looks like because it's going to be astronomical, <laughs> but he deserves it. Hey, last one there, Ben. Your champion, well, your Super Bowl and your champion. Who you like? Um, I know it's I know it's so cliche. I don't see anybody beating the Ravens. Um, hmm. I really don't. I mean, I I think the way that they've sort of gone through the league, both on both conferences. Um, obviously, the win. San Fran, I think, you know, said, said a lot to me. And I, look, I at times am, I'm, I'm critical of Lamar. You know, when, when the Vikings played him a couple years ago in Baltimore, I mean, watching him firsthand, I was like, man, this guy will, you know, he'll throw an 80 yard dot and then he'll <laughs> throw an eight yard dirt ball, you know, <laughs> and you're like, like, I'm not to have here. You know, if he can't scramble around, do you trust his accuracy? Do you trust his quarterbacking ability? But the more and more I, I watch him, the guy just makes plays. 
you know, he just makes everybody else around him better. And you always have a chance with him. So um, that defense is always strong. And uh, and they're obviously well coached. I'm going to go uh, the Ravens to win the whole thing. So Ravens, Lions. Okay. There you go. That's great. We love it. We hope so, right? We thanks, hope ben. so. Hey, Ben, thanks so much. We appreciate your time over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and certainly we hope you have a great time here in Detroit. And uh, maybe I'll see you at the game. Back. Yes, yeah, sir. absolutely, guys. Guys, good luck, man. I mean, honestly, to be honest with you, I think most of the NFL is going for you guys. So Thank luck. you. That's we appreciate awesome. it. Thanks, uh, man. Absolutely. Great You're stuff, Ben. Man. All the best. Uh, great stuff to you All and right. the Vikings uh, in the coming seasons.